final for the final item for today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we kind of we're, we're kind of busy. Okay. Get a lot of things going on. Um, I think you probably know that between Commissioner Shrump and myself, we we go through all the claims every two weeks or three or whenever they're whenever they're done. Um, and we found we found some some oddities uh, along the way. One I'm thinking about right now, while my, it's fresh on my mind, was we we had a claim we got a claim from Purdue here a while back for thirty nine thousand dollars for <laughs> professional fee, and, and we had absolutely no idea what that meant. Um, so that's why we asked. Uh, well, I, I asked Dave Addison to come yesterday, and apparently Dave doesn't do meetings. I don't know. He uh, he always sends Cindy, but uh, it, 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 that is that is the part of their salaries that we pay. So I guess my question is, life would be easier, I think, when you're looking at claims, if that line item said educator salary instead of professional fee. Because professional fee, I'm going to investigate. What is what is a thirty-nine thousand dollar professional fee? It's non-descriptive to me. Had it said, you know, county share educator salary, I would have understood. So, uh, and but yeah. does that that come from Purdue? Come from Purdue. They won't do it that way because they're they're paying the salary. We're just paying them. But I think on the claims. No, no, no. no. I I understand that, Bill. But when when she write when when she writes out a line item, she can have anything in that right. line item right. she wants to. Purdue doesn't have anything to do with that. It's your budget. It's your budget, not theirs. So. So anyway, I just think I think educator salaries would be uh, a, a more appropriate on on that line. Um, but again, we you know it's a situation just like it was with the, the Bowen Center. We as commissioners, we weren't really sure what all you know what what all we're supposed to pay for due, and and um, uh, we keep we keep seeing things like. Uh, uh, the, the, the pretty big expenses for sending out the little thing they send out nine months of the year. That's a that's a very costly little piece of paper. Yeah, Cindy, like extension, extension, extension news. news mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, that's printed by somebody up by Tri Lakes, and so Cindy and the office staff is looking at doing their own their own in house on that. I thought they did. And uh, no, no. The bulk mailing for is is humongous for that also. So, uh, the, those are things that we learned about. You know, we, we we just didn't understand the new one. The new one we got was, and, and y'all been a lot around probably longer than me, but uh, um, we paid passages seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for a half a year. For what? We've I don't know. We've, got, we've always done that. Yeah. But I say that we've, but, but, we've lowered that, Don. Yeah, what it used to be over hundred dollars. All I'm saying is, yeah. I don't know what it's all about. What they, so what we'll be asking tonight? passages to come in and just tell us. Yeah, it's an educational it should, process well, for us. It I mean, uh, well, yeah. I mean, if you're going to pay us, they used to invite us out there for breakfast yeah. before a meeting, like one of our meetings once a year, just to show you around. Okay. It was kind of good. They used to do that, but they don't do that anymore. Well, I mean, we, yeah. So, so th these are just things that we're trying to keep our eyes open. Now, yeah. here's now here's one that came up this time, but then, but then we learned about it yesterday. So let me let me explain uh, a, a, a potential problem for the county here. Okay. Uh, there was a claim in, from the sheriff's department for sixty four thousand six hundred dollars to uh, a fellow. John Brown, I think his name was. It wasn't made out to him, though. It was made out to the inmate. The correctional inmate. Health, con, 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 correctional Health Corp. You're right. right. I didn't want it to sound like we paid um, him directly. When I was a paramedic, and they'd send us to the jail to get someone who was sick or injured, as a rule, I would say, well, if this is a prisoner now. Is anybody going with me? Their response would be, nope, we OR'd them. Now, OR is uh, own recognizance, right? We're Basically, they longer. just said, they're no longer our prisoner. A and why did they do that? They don't want to pay the health care bill. 
they 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 said no nope, if this person is sick they, the county don't we're not going to pay the health care bill so there you go they're on their own then my then my my next thing to the to the prisoner or former prisoner was if you're doing this to escape all you have to do is tell me and I will open the door and you can get out because I really could care less so I don't beat me up if you want to try to escape it I'll just stop and open the door so good golly that went on for years and years and years so basically this one particular there's two cases the first one's done now but this particular inmate got sick with the hospital uh, come up with a two hundred and forty or two hundred fifty thousand dollar bill. Uh, our county's contention was, uh, uh we award them; they're on their own. Uh, courts come back and said, uh, uh, you can't do that. You just can't. You, they were in your custody. They got sick. You're responsible for the bill. So, un unbeknownst to me, and over the years that this has gone on. Um, uh, our attorney and the sheriff and who all has worked with the the health care provider and got the bill from two hundred and forty or fifty thousand dollars down to sixty four thousand six hundred and that's why that claim was paid so that's that claim is paid the bad news is there's another one sitting out there for about forty thousand dollars so this one came out of the jail expenses I, I don't know if they have enough to do the next one or not. Our, but our insurance or whoever we hire to take care of the health care, uh, I'm not sure how that works. That's good. That's a, that's a good point, and I can tell you how it works. Okay. Almost non-existent. So and, and, and quite frankly, you should have the sheriff come in and explain that to you because, be, because it is almost non-existent. Health care insurance for inmates is almost non-existent. So, but we're paying a premium for that? Yeah. We are paying for catastrophic, though. Well, the hopes are, we also are paying this health, uh, correctional health care, which, if I got the vibrations right yesterday, I think the sheriff is reviewing that contract and maybe thinking about going with someone else. I, that's, that's just aside. But, but um, I think the idea is try to keep them healthy, try to keep them in the jail, and try to catch these little things before they get big by this healthcare organization that works in the jail. But I, I, I can't really, I'm not gonna speak for the sheriff as far as the insurance and stuff. He just alluded to us that it's practically non-existent, so. But the, if we wouldn't have had that healthcare thing though, Amy, help me out here because I'm not a guru of insurance, but that's how they got, the, in, the insurance people are what got it to be the cost of Medicare plus 4%. Not us, it was the insurance people. The inmate, whatever we're paying for, is the one that worked the hospital bill from 200 and whatever. I don't, I don't recall that. But that is, that is where they came up with the number, was they, the hospital agreed to take the Medicare allowable reimbursement plus 4%, and somehow that came to 64,600. So I, I don't remember the, health, the insurance company being in that mix. Well, the reason we got into that was the stop everybody from wanting to go to the hospital for every time they cough. I wonder has, how much that has reduced that. Well, there's two different Fair things point. happening. We have our, our health care in the jail, which we, is our jail physician, right. the prescriptions, all that. But then we used to also have an inmate catastrophic insurance, which is the insurance that kicks in once the inmate leaves the jail and it pays for deputies to be by their side at the hospital and inmate catastrophic type occurrences. So there's a couple things that are weird. coming into play there. They are two totally different things though. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. And, and, and I'm sorry, I can't explain them. I don't know. I can't either, but I, I like, no, but he has it one time better about the, the okay. reason for going to that. So we did not stand for... Can't I just wanted you to know these big claims are sitting out there. Just healthcare in the jail just, the jail the jail just could be kind of strong. Yes, it could if, be. If, if you can't OR something. them, and get, I mean, because yeah. just, just the number of people I took myself as a paramedic on one shift, not working every day, the county probably saved thousands and thousands of dollars by ORing, but that's not going to happen. 
losses can't be bad. So. Okay, I'll keep moving here. Sorry about that. Um, yesterday, uh, the commissioners finalized the wind ordinance from our perspectives. And, and, and essentially, we did. We made one change to the ordinance and sent it back to the plan commission. And that change is uh, in the setbacks. Our, our setback, um, we went at to 6.5 times the tower height with a minimum of 2,640 feet to the non-participant's property line. So that's, that's a big change. What, what, how, how was the, what was the change then? I mean, what it was. It went from 1,500 then to 2,640. It went, the, the plan commission sent to us 1,500 foot. So you, ex you made it farther? We made it farther. Good. Um, but we also added this, this multiplier factor because good. they just had 1,500 foot. Well, well, what if someone come up with a thousand foot tower? Okay. Well, then that's. Well, that's good. We wanted to multiply. You strengthened the. We right. strengthened yeah. it. Yeah. So good for you. But that's okay. about all we really did. The decommissioning is still in there. They they have to pay us. They have to give us cash money up front. What it will cost to take those towers down. I asked that we add to that the cost to repair the bridges and the roads once again when they came down. But we decided that, as a group, and I did too, we decided that that's not a number we can readily come up with because we don't know how much damage it, it, it we we if someone, if someone files an application, they want to start a wind farm. One of the things they have to do is to come up with a price of how much it will take to decommission that tower. They then tell us what that price is and we get our own price estimate for how much it costs to decommission that tower. That's pretty hardcore. That's probably a number we can, it, it could be pretty firm. The roads and the bridges wasn't a firm, and we didn't know how to deal with that. So, so on that decommissioning cost, that's the cost today. Is there anything in there to review that in 10 years yeah. or anything? Can I answer? What it, what it is, is it's, they can either say what they think it'll cost to decommission it, or the county can pay to get our own estimates on what it'll cost to decommission it. So if the, if the vendor, the project group says it's going to cost $250,000 to tear this down, and we say, wait, that, that number is way too low, we can then pay to get our own estimate, and that's what they'll have to pay. So if we find that, it's going to be 750000 So we, we can do that at any time. Yeah. But, Bill, that's, that is our money. And that's right. We invest that money. Yeah. That's sort of your hedge for the future. Yeah, I understand but, but, that. I just but, concerned about yeah. the inflation changing that figure. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> I, I, I thought... I was really happy with Commissioner Rethlake yesterday because he asked a tough question. He really did. He, he turned right at Commissioner Schrumpf and I and said, so is the message you're sending here that you don't want wind power in Wetley County? And I said, yeah, right. that's the message I'm sending. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, mean, I don't make a, something up. We essentially... And I say this because I don't want I don't want to make this long winded, but I say this because you can always make something super hard and back off. If if five or ten years down the road we find out we really made a bad mistake here, as I said yesterday, it wouldn't be the first time I ever made a mistake. But if we if we find we made a mistake that that we're losing income and this thing is not a it's not a health problem, it's not a safety problem, it's not a quality of life problem, we can back off. We can review it and redo it again. But we can't tighten it. If, if we find out we made a mistake and we've got 150 towers sitting out there and they want to put another 150 in, we, we can't tighten it. So 
I guess that's just the stand we took. Did we essentially keep wind power from coming to Whitley County? Yep. I guess but we probably did. I kind of heard a rumor of this company that was here. Have they pulled up stakes and left? That's what I heard. I, yes. I heard I mean, they were trying to sell their assets. I, they, twofold. One, apparently they left the office they had leased. They are no longer, they no longer maintain an office in this county, okay? That's, that's a fact. What is, what I can't tell you as a fact, but I've heard is that uh, Wind Capital is trying to sell all their assets, uh, and that it, it, it's been known, this, this can't enter into any of the discussions, uh, that I think Paula will tell you this, all the planning commission discussions, all our discussions, what can enter into that is the fact that Wind Capital's parent company is on very shaky ground. They were, they, I, I have their, their uh, financial report from a couple of years ago. Man, they, they're from, where, the Netherlands? Or Ireland. Ireland. I, well, yeah. I, I, they're, they're somewhere overseas. Yeah. They are on terribly shaky ground. But that couldn't really, that really couldn't enter into any of our conversations. But still, it's hard not to think about it in the back of your mind. You want to bring somebody in that might fail? I don't know. But anyway, so go back to your question. They have, they no longer have an office in this town. And, and I've, I've seen where they want to sell some assets some of which are in Indiana. Mm -hmm. so, so I know it's kind of broad, but I don't have any other, better way to state it at this time. I got a question for you and maybe Paula. And, and all, your, all the, the Planning Commission has done discussions about these towers and the decommissioning and all this kind of stuff. No place did I ever see anything about all these tremendous amount of transmission lines that are going to have to be built to service these towers and the decommissioning of that particular part. Because that is going to be a huge infrastructure just to make them work if they ever got built. You're, you're right. You're right. But that was Nor never ever there. mentioned in anything. No. Different ordinance, I think. No, it was but it has, we, one has to go with the other. We have existing transmission lines, and at those that they would have tied into, but it would have taken some definitely underground work well, it's got to take substations and everything to get the voltage well, so they can tap into the transmission. Now, one of the meetings I that was... Is, that is right, Tom. And, and, and quite <laughs> frankly, quite frankly, I, I, I heard somebody ask, why, why is this, this company interested in, in Indiana or in Whitley County? And I, the answer I heard was because we had the wind. No, no it's not. The, 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 the answer... I mean, I, this, this came from John Doster. Now I'm not. I'm not talking about a school. I'm telling you, this came from John Doster. Yeah, no, it's First of all, where do they want to? Where do they want to put them? Right here, right? Okay. Why do they want to put them here? Because the, the help me here, somebody that uh, Raver. Is that Raver? There's where there's where the grid is. Well, and look, a huge one on south. Right. So 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 they were really saving money by putting them in here because they could get to the grid. Yes, it is more open than the rest of the county, but quite frankly, every dollar you save by not having to run a, a, a power line, I think, the, I think the longest distance was like nine miles. Yeah, but, it, but it's still a tremendous, yeah. tremendous yeah. amount of stuff that's going to have to be built. Correct. And, 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 and I think you're right. I don't think, we ever, I don't think we ever got there. I really don't. I don't think you we know, ever I got there. You know, I don't think you have to worry about to it. That but point. still, in all the talk, mm -hmm. that was never mentioned. That's a good, yeah. that's a good point. But well, it seems to me like that might be a separate ordinance. Uh, but you've got to have one without the other. That's true. But, well, well we've the, got where, one, we don't have the other. Where the confusion came in about that and... Quite frankly, I'll be honest with you, I'm glad we never got there yeah. because the person, you've got to run across people's property. Mm -hmm. Those people then become participants, no longer non-participants, because they're going to get paid to run across their property. Then, then the setbacks lower. Right, I wondered if you changed that at all. I'm sorry, we did, we did, uh, we did change. Uh, they can't wait. Non. Right. We, we did change non. Or excuse me. We also 
increase the